Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Velocity 2018 in San Jose. I'm here with Creston from Humio. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. So Humio, yeah. what do you guys do? Well, we do uh, log analytics. So basically run a piece of, we build a piece of software that you can run either in our cloud, use our cloud, or you can run it yourself. And basically you send your logs there and then you can search them or you can pull data out of them and graph it and build dashboards uh, for your operations team, DevOps teams, uh, do incident report, incident response, basically searching into it. So that, that kind of feedback loop with the, the logs that come out of your, your systems. So can I just use grep on my own logs or do you guys have something you've added to this to make it a little better? Sure, I mean, at the core, uh, human was very much a grep on steroids, right? But if, you, if you're running a complex system, so, so, so what's happening is today, of course, with microservices and cloud and distributed systems, your systems are running on, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands of computers and it, it's not really feasible to run grep across a thousand machines, right? So, so you bring all the logs together in one place and, and store them so you can really efficiently grep them, right? That, that's a, that, that's a, the core of it. But then once you've grepped something, you found something, you can also select, like, I want this piece of information and say I want to build a time chart over that or histogram or pie charts and whatnot. And, and, and then that's really, that's, that's really informative for, for dev team uh, or some kind of operations team to sit there and say, hmm, is that, is that normal? Does that look, look normal? So do you find some of the stories in the data too? Or do you, do you find the anomalies and the, the patterns or is that uh, for the user to visualize and then find for themselves? Well, typically <clears throat> there'll be, um, there'll be some, some, some people who, uh, who built these dashboards, right? Uh, and then a lot more people who use them, right? So it could be, you could like use it as a way to build a, a report, but instead of building a, like a PDF report, you just build a live report where you can just send your boss a link and say, go look at, this is what it looks like right now. Um, so there's different kinds of users. Uh, but the interesting thing is because once you build a dashboard, uh, as soon as you click on something, uh, you end up in, in the search field where you can just you know, like refine the search yourself. So it, it, it's, um, once you have something up and running, it, it's easy for developers to, uh, to kind of dive into the logs themselves. And that's, that's a, it, it's a surprising experience when you have you know, easy access to the logs. Uh, and often that feedback loop that ends up getting, the happening is that ooh, people realize this is it's really easy. And then they add some more logs to the system and then you go look for them and you can get easily built like ad hoc little metrics or extra things that you um, make get out of um, get out of how the system works. Right? So if I, if I have a bunch of logs mm -hmm. and I send them to you guys, mm -hmm. you make them accessible for me. Yes. And if I build them into a dashboard mm -hmm. and then I send you more logs, mm -hmm. does it update? Is it like sure. a real time? Sure, that's Feeding. one of the big um, one of the big differentiators from our competitors is that um, is these dashboards are, are truly live. So, where most of products in this space basically take in the logs and then put them in a database, building indexes, uh, and then the dashboard part is a question of every thirty seconds or every minute mm, hits, you go right, yep. you go run a query and, and update the dashboard, right? Yep, yep. Um, so, so what we do is basically a, a streaming query mechanism, right? Where for all the dashboard components, they become part of the ingest pipeline. So they keep a, they maintain a, a real time view of what's of a time window of what some computation is, the number of errors over the last five minutes uh, for a simple thing, or a, what does the time chart look like for something over the last 24 days or not. Uh, and that's kept in memory. So, uh, so the, the dashboards are really truly live. And that also means the alerting mechanism is truly right, live, right? right? right. Uh, so that's, that's one part that's different. The other part that's different is we don't build those indexes. So, so in a typical, say, a database-based uh, logging solution, right. 
you take in, say, a terabyte of data and put it in, in a normal database, that bloats to like between five and 10 terabytes because the indexes are bigger than the original data. That's, that's kind of a, a typical uh, uh, time-space trade-off you do, that you, you bloat the data to make it fast to search it. Um, and they need that because they, every 30 seconds there's a new query coming in. Now we just get away with all that and just compute it kind of in memory and flow uh, as, as a streaming query on the, on the way in, and we just save all the events, compress them and save all the events. So, they, so the one terabyte of data that you push in turns into 100 megabytes. Uh, so that's, that's a tenth, whereas a typical database thing is like five to 10x bigger. Bigger, right. Um, so you can, I mean, you can easily get in a situation where there's, f you only need a 50th of the, of the disk storage. Uh, so, and I've, I mean, lots of these things add up to reduce the complexity of the system. That means it's easier to operate. Uh, there's less data to move around, to back up. Does, um, does Humio require someone who thinks in a DevOps way? I mean, uh, do, do regular organizations that don't think about that use a tool like Humio? Um, sure, typical organizations, um, I mean, there's a couple different ways to look at it, right? There's people who want a point solution. They want to say, well, we have we have access logs from a web server, and we just want some pre-built dashboards that you know show us everything about us, and we don't want to care about it. That's typically not our kind of customer, right? We want people who want to tinker with it a little bit. Uh, so our typical customer has some, some people who want to tinker, and then a lot more users who just want to, want to use the dashboards. Um, but definitely, so, but, but we're, it's like selling Excel. Like it's, imagine you're selling a spreadsheet Excel, right? Uh, we provide something, it doesn't have any data in it and no functions, uh, but as soon as you put some interesting data in it and build some functions, other people can use that. And then uh, the tinkerers will use pivot tables and lookup tables. Exactly, and that, right? exactly. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So if you were to look at Humio in the market right now and say you know where you are, mm -hmm. where do you want to be in six months? And then where do you want to be a year from now? So, um, so what we're seeing in the marketplace is all the, all the interesting customers are, are on-prem customers. So this was really built for- Running uh, in their own- In their own organization. Right, so right. these are like financials, it's uh, yep. healthcare. Protective and Protective regulated, environment. Right. Regulated um, maybe. And that's kind of where we came from. Admittedly more from a DevOps perspective, uh, but uh, so what we're seeing now is these organizations and high volume data, uh, because it turns out the big differentiator for us is on-prem and high volume. Uh, and that's, um, that's what we're, what we're uh, struggling with, you could say now. That's our challenge now, is as a small company, the really interesting customers uh, that could really use this are huge enterprises, right? So we're learning how to navigate huge enterprises, how to sell to them, all this. So I'd be super happy to have six months from now, you know, we have, 15, 20 large enterprise customers. Uh, we're talking to a lot, but you know, there's lots of interesting challenges in going there. So, and what is a large enterprise customer like? Uh, it's a big mean, bank that you big, would know the name of, or yeah. big financial institutions, big manufacturer of 310,000 people. Typically, the, the uh, ones that are interested now are you know tech savvy uh, customers. So yeah. it'd be large uh, internet enterprises, mm -hmm. uh, uh, cloud companies. Uh, but so companies that are in this world yeah. doing a digital transformation. That too, yeah. We see, we, shouldn't yeah. people in that category be interested in, in sure, Humio? Sure, I mean, like, uh, there's like a couple of big, big banks that are they're doing their own internal platform for like running Kubernetes uh, and having individual teams being able to kind of pull these services in. So in that case, Humio is an ideal thing that run, you get a full multi-tenant solution that they can run in service to their internal customers. Um, so yes. And so you guys run with pretty much any stack that someone has. Sure. Um, as long as there's a log file. As long as there's a log file, yeah. And yeah. And any kind of log file, I mean. Any kind of log file, yeah. You'd write some regular expressions or different, there's different ways of kind of getting the data in. Uh, and that's of course one of the challenges also is people have all kinds of different log files. Um, and that's part where you have to do some manual work to make sure all the different kinds of data. So yeah, so in six months, I'd be really happy to have between, happy, happy to have 10, 15, 20 large enterprise customers. Uh, 
I don't know. That's as far as I can see right so, now. Yeah, six months is, is easier to see, but yeah. 12 months is like, where is the whole log file industry going to be in a year from now? There is, um, I don't know where it's going to be. How, how would I know? Um, AI going to have a role in there maybe? It's a limited, a limited role. Uh, there's something that you could, uh, you know, all this AI and machine learning, you know, it needs a sprinkle of domain knowledge. That's one of the things we've learned, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, so you can't just apply it like yep. blindly. Humans in the loop. So, so another area where we're actually having a big uptake is security, uh, mm -hmm. like network security monitoring, security operations of various kinds. And I could easily imagine some machine learning being used there, right? So uh, we're actually already using, some of our customers are using our APIs to pull out the data again, filter it, and like putting it through some Python scripts of their own. But you need domain, domain knowledge to be able to apply any machine learning, really. Um, and that's, you know, maybe we'll have a branch, a Humio security branch that does have, have a lot of, um, of security domain knowledge. And that would be a, a reasonable place to also put some machine learning in. Yeah, I could easily see that happening in a year. Excellent. Well, Creston, we look forward to uh, watching you guys on your journey. Oh, thank, thank you. you.